All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to discuss the finite intersection property, which is a super useful fact about closed sets in uh, RK. And intuitively it just says the following, suppose you have closed subsets, F1, F2, F3, that are kind of nested or decreasing, think like Russian dolls in some sense. Then it turns out the intersection, which we call F, is also non-empty. And this is what we want to prove today, so very neat. And I'll give you a nice consequence of this in the next video. So, theorem, the finite intersection property. So, if Fn is a decreasing sequence, sequence and decreasing just means that f1 is bigger than f2 which is bigger than f3 dot 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 of so closed bounded and non-empty subsets of rk then the intersection has the same property. Then, so press F to pay respects. So F, which is the intersection from one to infinity of Fn, is also closed, bounded, and non-empty. And by the way, it's very important that the sets are closed. Because it turns out, for instance, for open intervals, this is not true. Because, for instance, consider the following. So here's a non-example. So if Fn is just the open interval 0 and 1 over n, so for instance like this, So it starts with the open interval 0, 1, and then it goes in the open interval 0, 1 half, etc., etc. Then it turns out the intersection is just the empty set. So then the intersection from 1 to infinity of Fn is just the empty set. And the reason is, well, first of all, 0 is not in that set. But also, if you have any positive number x, then if you choose n large enough, then 0, uh, 1 over n doesn't have x anymore. So x is outside of the interval 0, 1 over n. In particular, with the intersection, x isn't there anymore. So it really contains nothing in that sense. And the reason is those intervals are not closed. All right. And now let me prove this, and I want to emphasize this is a very special feature of RK. It is not necessarily true in other metric spaces. So we have to use a tool that works only for RK. So proof. So again, let Fn be closed, bounded, non-empty and decreasing and decreasing and let f to be the intersection then first of all f has to be closed so close is a not not a problem and that's because each of the f ends is closed and if you take, if you remember the intersection of any number of closed sets, you still get a closed set. Because each Fn is closed. I think I mentioned this, but it just follows because the union of any number of open sets is open and the complement of an open set is closed. The complement of a closed set is open. 
Um, and next, next order of business, well, how, why is F bounded? Well, it's simply because you see the intervals or the sets you're decreasing. So that is F1, okay? And in particular, F2, and in particular F, well, it's a subset of F1. You see, this tiny piece is included in the initial piece, and this is bounded by assumption. So because F is a subset of F1, and by assumption F1 is bounded. So the point is, the interesting thing to show is that it's non-empty. Show that f, which is again the intersection from 1 to infinity of fn, is non-empty. That is, we want to find some element that is in all of the Fn's. And here's how we do that. It's actually a very nice construction because look, start with F1. Well, F1 is non-empty, so we can pick an element in F1. Okay. Then F2. Well, F2 is non-empty, so we can pick an element in F2. F3 is non-empty, so we can pick an element in F3, and then you just continue for every n, you can pick an element in Fn. And I know this technically requires the axiom of choice, but that's beyond this course. So for each n, we know that Fn is non-empty. So pick or choose xn to be in fn. So let xn be any, you know, at least one element in fn. And the point is this gives you a sequence. So let's study the sequence xn. Now here's the thing. The sequence xn, well, by definition, xn is in fn, but also that's included in f1. So notice Uh, for each, uh, for all n, xn, it's in fn, but it's included in f1, so xn is in f1. But the point is f1 is bounded. What does that mean? It implies that the sequence is bounded. And why is this so important? Because now we can just apply the bolzano weierstrass theorem, which again is very unique to RK. So by bolzano weierstrass we know that there's a convergent subsequence. So there is a subsequence uh, x and k with x and k converging to some x. So this weird sequence of x n actually converges at least through a subsequence to some x, and I'm claiming that x works. So claim x is an f which would be enough because then that would imply that f is non-empty and then we would be done. Okay, so how do you show that x is an intersection? You just show it's in each of the sets. So we need to show So I want to write xn, but we already have xn, but just show that x is that, we need to show the following for all 
n naught, x is in f n naught. So no matter which value I pick, x is in it. But now, notice the following. For all k, if k is bigger than n naught, so again, k is arbitrary, it'll be the value of our sequence. If the train is bigger than n naught, the express train will also be bigger than n naught. Then nk will also be bigger than n naught. As you see, this is n naught, this is k, and this is the express train. But then what does that mean? Then let's consider a subsequence x and k, by definition, so this is x and k, by definition it's in funk, so f and k, but funk is in f and naught, because this is bigger, because n naught comes before n k, so that's in f and naught, so in particular it implies that x and k is in f and naught. But look, what do we get? We therefore get that the subsequence eventually is in the set f and naught. So this is x and k, x and k, etc., etc. It's an f and naught. And therefore, the limit, again, because all the values of this sequence are eventually in that set, the limit must also be in that set. But then, Since x and k converges to x and so since x and k is an f and naught and x and k converges to x and that set is closed. So if you have a conversion sequence in the closed set, that limit must also be in f and not. Um, so if you have a conversion sequence in the closed set, the limit must also be in that closed set. And then you're done. So hence, x is in f and not. And remember, that's what we had to show. We needed to show that for all n not, x is in f and not, and therefore we are done. All right, thank you very much.